As you learn new things, remembering what you learned and applying that information successfully seems rather simple, at least until you work on acquiring more complex information with advanced terminology, theories, and applications. For example, I enjoy growing vegetables in my garden, and general newspaper articles and websites provide helpful tips that most people can perform. However, a college-level botany class may use scientific terminology and in-depth concepts when presenting the importance of sunlight and the interaction of that sunlight on growing carrots and other vegetables. In the same way, a college-level research project will require a thorough understanding of advanced terminology and concepts. As you are learning this new information, it is important for you to arrange and organize the material so you can return to it for review. First, it is important to recognize that you will be learning new concepts, using new terminology, and applying them to new circumstances. Since this material is new to you, it will probably take time to absorb and understand it. Your instructors don't expect you to grasp the new information the first time you hear or read it, so you shouldn't have those expectations of yourself. Depending on the complexity of the ideas, you may need to read the new material three or four times before you understand it, and then you may have some questions. That is okay. Allow yourself time Give your brain all the time it needs to absorb the new ideas. The SQ3R method was developed by Nancy V. Wood and is in the College Reading and Study Skills, published in 1991, by Holt, Reinhardt, and Winston. Wood suggests that when tackling new material, you break the process into five simple steps. Survey, question, read, recite, and review. First, choose a manageable section to work with. It is important that you don't try to read and understand the whole book in one reading or even a complete article or chapter. It has complex information. Just like your instructors break up information into segments for lectures and class activities, you need to break up the section to read into manageable sections. For some materials, this may be a chapter or a few pages. For other materials, just one page will be enough to overwhelm you. Whatever the section and whatever the material, select the amount of information you can deal with. When making your selection, make sure that you start at the beginning. If this is a review of material you have studied previously, you may be able to read a bigger section but you will need the fundamental elements that the author uses to introduce the topic. Even if this information is a review of previous knowledge, it is important to recognize that the author felt it was important to the understanding of the issue. If you do only need information in the middle of a book, be prepared to refer to material presented earlier. After selecting the section you will work with, the first step is to survey the material. What visual cues have the authors used to explain the material? Note the sidebars, graphics, captions. Also scan the headings and subheadings and font variations such as the use of bold and italics, quite often for specific terms and concepts. All of these visual tools are helpful to prepare yourself for that information. This is comparable to looking ahead as you walk on the sidewalk. You see the potholes, flowers, and other visual cues to help you navigate through a neighborhood. This is especially important when exploring a new area, including a new area of study. After surveying the material for visual cues about the material, ask yourself what should you know after reading this material? If there are questions at the end of the section, consider these helpful hints from the author. If there aren't questions provided, you may need to develop questions. These questions help flag ideas as you approach them in your reading and add to the visual cues to prepare your brain for the new information. After scanning for visual cues and noting the intended questions, read the material. 
Remember that you will probably read the material three or four times, so this first time, simply read the material. Don't take notes or highlight any part. Just read for simple comprehension. Take a brief pause. Let your brain rest. Remember that brain overload often leads to confusion, so give it a moment to absorb what you just read. You might even want to pause during the reading if you get overwhelmed to give your brain a chance to get caught up. Reflect on the suggested questions that the author anticipates that you will understand as a result of reading the material. Can you answer them? Does the material make sense? Are there additional questions that would be helpful to check your understanding? The second time you read that section, have a notepad and pen or pencil handy to take notes and code the information. For example, you might put an asterisk or star by the concepts you consider really important, key ideas that are essential to future information. A number symbol might be useful to note the supporting ideas. A question mark would note concepts that you have questions about or need clarification on. A caret or insert symbol could note the new terms. Other symbols can be added depending on your needs and the topic, but the important idea is that you are noting specific ideas that are important to your understanding of the issue. You might prefer use several different colors of highlighters, assuming you are writing on your own notes or a book that belongs to you and not someone else. The third time, read the material, and this time, it is very likely that you will understand the material, although not always. Make sure to note any section that is confusing or raises more questions. Talk to other classmates or the instructor about that material. In fact, most instructors and tutors anticipate that there is material students don't understand and encourage students to ask for clarification. Instructors and tutors are usually willing to help students that have attempted to understand the material, especially when they recognize the effort that has been made and want to encourage students to learn independently. The second R is for recite. You need to express the main ideas of the material in your own words. You can repeat the ideas aloud, and it does not matter who hears the material. It is important for you to understand the material well so that you can explain the concepts to yourself or others. You also could write the main concepts in an essay, a story, or even develop a song. Each of those auditory cues will help you remember the concepts. And frequent recitation of the material keeps the ideas more accessible in your memory and therefore easier to store in long-term memory as well. Now that you have surveyed, questioned, read, and recited the material, don't forget to review. Review should happen daily for new material, but also make sure that any new material you have learned since then doesn't contradict or lead to confusion with the previous information you knew. In addition, review weekly by practicing problems and quizzing yourself on the terminology, concepts, and their applications at least weekly. Remember that many of your classes build on each other, so this review process should continue throughout your academic studies. This information is from the Study Guides and Strategies website, which is on the link right here.